So you want to be a developer. That's awesome. The software development world is one of the most challenging and rewarding career paths that someone can take. In leading the instruction for a coding bootcamp, I meet daily with aspiring students from all over the world. And one pattern that I see with new students when I ask the question, what kind of developer do you want to be, is usually them just kind of giving me a blank stare. One time I even had a student reply back with the response, a good one which is always a good thing. You want to be a good developer. However, through the years, I've discovered that it's vital for coders to decide what their development focus is actually going to be. The world of software development is so vast that it's nearly impossible for someone to master every aspect of the process. Consider if I approached a world-class track and field coach and said that I wanted to train for the Olympics and win a gold medal in track and field. The coach would most likely give me once over and chuckle to himself, but after that, his question would probably be, what event do you want to train in? He would ask this question because the training regimen for the 100 yard dash is dramatically different from the high jump. In the same way, as a development student, you need to narrow your focus on what type of developer you want to be in the long run. It's perfectly fine to start out by learning the full stack of development skills at a high level. And in fact, during our three month immersive boot camp, we teach students every aspect of the application stack. However, after you've been introduced to each one of the programming components, it's important that you pick out what your specialty is going to be. I'm gonna walk through each of the types of developer categories so you can get an idea of what they entail. After going through the list, I hope that you'll be able to have a better idea of what type of coder you wanna be. In deciding how to choose a developer specialty, I always like to start off with the full stack option. I start with this option because many new coding students I've spoken with assume that all developers are full stack devs, and this simply is not true. Full stack development means that you feel comfortable working with every stage of an application's development. In referencing our track and field analogy, a full stack developer would be like a decathlete. This is a category that I personally fall into. My focus on the full stack side of programming is due to a number of factors. First of which, in order to teach students and to be able to write development curriculum, I need to be familiar with all of the key development types. And then secondly, I've spent years as a freelance developer, and in many cases, freelance coders are asked to build an application from the ground up, create all of the features, design the system, and deploy it to the web or app store. Much like a decathlete, full stack developers usually are good at a number of technologies. However, a common pattern that you'll see is that it's very difficult to be world class at every layer of the development stack. Programming is simply too complex and languages and frameworks change versions so rapidly that it makes it nearly impossible to excel at every stage of the app development life cycle. I've spoken at length on how repetition is a requirement for mastering any skill. Because of how time consuming each level of the development process is, full stack devs simply don't have the time to become true masters at any one aspect. I augment this issue by focusing my time on the components that I excel in, such as server-side development and things like that, and then I work with other developers to help cover up my weaker areas, such as the design and UI and UX components. Next on the list of developer types is server-side programming. This is probably my favorite layer of the dev stack. Server-side specialists spend most of their time working on building and implementing algorithms that enable programs to work properly. Additionally, server-side developers typically spend quite a bit of time building APIs. This is because most server-based applications need to communicate with the outside world in some form or another. This layer of the development stack will require you to specialize in languages such as Ruby, Python, Java, or C++. When it comes to choosing a developer specialty, the third layer to choose from is the front end component. Not too long ago, a front end developer was considered someone who spent all day working with HTML and CSS. Their main goal was to make applications look pretty. 
However, the definition of a front-end developer has changed dramatically with the advent of client-side frameworks. These frameworks, such as AngularJS and React, have made it possible for front-end programmers to build complete applications with little server-side interaction. These applications are rendered completely in the browser because they're written in JavaScript, which is a programming language that browsers can actually understand. And whenever the app needs any additional data, it can simply communicate via APIs. A common pattern that I work with is building a number of server-side Ruby applications and then having a singular Angular front-end app that renders the user interface in the browser. So if you love building applications that users will directly interact with and the idea of working with APIs doesn't scare you off, front-end development might be the right choice for you. Next on the list of developer types is mobile. If the idea of building the next Angry Birds or Instagram excites you, the mobile development field may be a good fit. Mobile programming used to be a very difficult field to enter. Only a few years ago, you would have to master multiple languages such as Objective-C and Java in order to build smartphone apps. However, JavaScript frameworks such as Ionic and React Native have made it possible to use JavaScript to build apps that behave like native smartphone applications. You can still use languages such as Swift, Objective-C, and Java to build truly native apps, and there's always gonna be a great set of jobs for devs who specialize in these languages. However, if you are a freelance or full stack developer, by leveraging a JavaScript framework, you can build smartphone and tablet-based apps for all of the platforms. And it's been my experience that the learning curve for these JavaScript frameworks is quite a bit lower than traditional mobile languages. Additionally, you may have noticed that the tools used for JavaScript-based mobile apps and front-end programming are similar. Because of this synergy, I've had a number of developer friends who've moved away from being server-side devs and moved into front-end coding because it allowed them to build applications for desktops, tablets, and for smartphones. If you're new to development, don't feel pressured to pick out a specialty immediately. Instead, my recommendation is to explore each type of development layer until you find a focus that you truly love. In this guide, I've provided you with a very high-level view of the developer types. However, in reality, you're going to need to become even more specific with your development focus. For example, if you're a server-side developer, you may want to focus on building applications that implement accounting systems. If you're an aspiring front-end developer, you may want to become a world-class security specialist. A key that I've discovered that helps quite a few students is to look at developer job boards. Job boards are great for listing out the specialties that companies are hiring for, and by going through a list of potential job descriptions, it may help you figure out what you want to focus on.